All right, let's take a look at the anatomy of an ARP poisoning attack. Basically, we have two options in a switch network for sniffing the network, because the problem is that the switch, after a couple seconds after startup, starts learning where all the hosts are. From that point forward, only frames that are intended for that host will be delivered to that host, and none of the other ports on the switch will receive that same data. So that's our initial issue to sniff a switch network, which you will generally find switches rather than hubs these days. So we do have a little bit of a, a hurdle to cross. What we're going to do is do an ARP poisoning attack, or we can actually flood the switch with so many inbound MAC addresses that it actually blows out all of its recorded information about the attached hosts. That's definitely loud, noticeable, and probably not the most optimal methodology. So what we're left with is a directed poisoning attack that involves actually sending unsolicited ARP responses to a host that didn't even really request them. The vulnerability or the flaw is that the host is still going to receive that data and it's still going to use it. So our victim system and the router will actually be the targets of our attack. We're going to poison each host's ARP cache with incorrect information. They'll use that on good faith and we've completed our attack. They'll build the frames to actually send it to the attacker, not each other host in the communication, or we're going to intercept all those packets. So our attacker is going to send an unsolicited ARP response to our victim, telling it that it is the actual router's IP address with its MAC address. So for purposes of demonstration, let's make this guy a dot three, dot two, and dot one on a 192. 168.0.0 network. Let's also use just M2s, M3s, etc. to uh, signify the MAC addresses. So this guy's legitimate MAC address, let's say is M3. Legitimate MAC address M2. Legitimate MAC address M1. Our attacker will tell our victim that he's actually dot one with a MAC address of MAC3. He will then tell the router that he is dot two with a MAC address of MAC three. Okay, these are going to be stored in the ARP cache for a finite period of time before it's flushed and then re-resolved. So in essence, we have to keep these ARP caches poisoned for the corresponding hosts. In a Windows system, that's going to be two minutes. In Cisco and Unix environments, it's going to be five minutes. So all our attacker really does is keep poisoning the caches, generally at 30 second intervals. When it comes time for the host to communicate, generally we're poisoning the host and the router, so most of the traffic's going to be set up local subnet. So this guy, when he goes to send data out to the internet, already has that information cached. He's going to build a frame, and the switch is just going to do its job. MAC3 lies over here, the switch knows it, it's going to send that data to the attacker. The attacker then just acts as a router and forwards the information out to the internet. When the inbound response packets come back, the router will perform the same uh, check operation to see if it knows where dot two really resides, and it does because we told him where we were, even though it's incorrect. He's going to build the frame, it's going to go back to the attacker, and then we just keep routing through. And that will go on indefinitely until you actually stop the attack.